Good evening, this is an English edition of Dalsan TV and my name is Abdelazak Ali. Thank you so much for tuning into Dalsan TV and let's have a look at some of the stories that are making headlines here in Somalia. Somalia president urges Somali police to combat gender-based violence. UN Security Council commends Somalia's progress in key priorities. Five killed in deadly bombing in Mogadishu. Four Manisa officers sentenced to death for murder by Mogadishu military court. That was our headlines. Now let's delve into our full bulletin. In the aftermath of the three shocking cases of women allegedly murdered by their husbands, Somali president, that is Mr. Hassan Sheikh Mohamud, made a visit to the police headquarters in Mogadishu. The, the incident has triggered widespread outrage in the capital, prompting the president to call on the Somali police force to prioritize the development of the country's laws and intensify efforts to combat corruption. In the aftermath of three shocking cases of women allegedly murdered by their husbands, Somali President Hassan Sheikh Mohamud made a visit to the police headquarters in Mogadishu on Monday. The incidents had triggered widespread outrage in the capital, prompting the president to call on the Somali police force to prioritize the development of the country's laws and intensify efforts to combat corruption and drug use. During his visit, President Mohamud received detailed reports from various departments within the police force's leadership. The reports encompassed the structure, operational procedures, reform plans, and statistics of the Somali police force. This comprehensive briefing aimed to provide the president with insights into the force's operations and to facilitate discussions on strategies to enhance security and address the recent surge in gender-based violence. The Somali police force has successfully apprehended the perpetrators responsible for the murders of the three women, all of which occurred within the first week of February. During the protests, demonstrators held placards bearing images of Lal Obdi Aziz Jazarin, a 28-year-old woman who was doused with petrol and set ablaze. Jazarin, a widow and mother of six, suffered severe burns. In another incident, Selben Haji, from southern district of Corioli, was arrested and charged with stabbing his 22-year-old wife, Fas Mofad Mohamed, to death. The woman, pregnant with her fourth child, fell victim to the brutal attack on February. In another incident, Selben Haji, from southern district of Corioli, was arrested and charged with stabbing his 22-year-old wife, Fas Mofad Mohamed, to death. The woman, pregnant with her fourth child, fell victim to the brutal attack on February. President Mohamud, while acknowledging the significant achievements of the Somali police force, emphasized the importance of strict enforcement of rules and policies to safeguard the dignity of both the police force and the community. He further stressed the significance of fostering a strong partnership between law enforcement agencies and the community, as it plays a pivotal role in ensuring the security of the country and the safety of Somali children and women. It is expected that these actions will lead to improved law enforcement, increased protection for vulnerable individuals, and a strengthened resolve to tackle the root causes of violence against women in Somalia. The United Nations Security Council convened a meeting at, to discuss the progress made by the federal government of Somalia in implementing its diverse priorities and composing development, security, women's em women empowerment, and addressing humanitarian needs within the country. Madam President, my briefing today will provide brief updates on eight areas. Firstly, political developments. Secondly, regional developments. Thirdly, a security update. Fourthly, women, peace and security. Fifthly, human rights. Sixthly, humanitarian situation and links to climate change. Seventhly, economic development. And finally, transition. So, Madam President, I will begin with an update on political developments. The National Consultative Council proposals of the 27th of May on the proposed new electoral model continue to be de debated intensely. On the positive side, there is broad public support for the transition to one person, one vote elections. But there is also a realization that the timelines proposed by the NCC are too ambitious. The UN is therefore working with the Ministry of Interior, Federal Affairs and Reconciliation to develop a realistic plan, which will nevertheless ensure the momentum towards one person, one vote is maintained. 
We welcome the recent <coughs> approval by Parliament of the procedural rules for constitutional changes. This now sets a clear pathway on process. It is now urgent to reach an inclusive consensus on the electoral framework and on the constitution we encourage all parties to engage in the spirit of compromise to finalise the process. <coughs> Without an agreed constitution, Somalia remains vulnerable to perennial crises with no agreed rules of the game to enable resolution. I commend the people of the federal member state of Puntland on the peaceful conclusion of the electoral process on the 8th of January 2024. President Saeed Abduhali Deni, the sixth president of Puntland, was re-elected by the Puntland State Assembly to a second term in office. The presence of President Hashan Sheikh Mahmoud and three federal member state presidents at the inauguration on the 25th of January was a positive signal. And we hope this has created the foundation for a reset of dialogue with full re-engagement of President Denny in the NCC process. The planned Garraway Conference on the future of Somalia could be an important part of this reset with the opportunity for wider consultation with key stakeholders, including women and youth. In Lassanud and the Sul region, the situation has remained calm since the violence of November 2023. There is, however, no formal ceasefire. We continue to urge all parties to work towards an immediate exchange of detainees, a commitment to no further violence, and to start dialogue to address the underlying drivers of the conflict. As the UN, we continue to provide humanitarian assistance to those affected and to support demining and early recovery. Madam President, my second update concerns regional developments. On the 1st of January, Ethiopia and Somaliland announced a memorandum of understanding which reportedly grants Ethiopia a 50-year lease on 20 kilometres of coastline in exchange for certain political and economic benefits to Somaliland. The full details of the MOU are not available, but public pronouncements have generated strong, hostile public reaction in Somalia. It is also worrying to see Al-Shabaab exploiting the situation as a tool for recruitment. We recognize that the strong feelings in Somalia are putting pressure on the government to respond, and we encourage the president to remain measured in his response. I echo the words of the Secretary General, who has recalled that the Security Council has repeatedly affirmed its respect for the sovereignty, territorial integrity, and unity in Somalia, and called for all parties to engage in peaceful and constructive dialogue, and to refrain from inflammatory words or actions that could further escalate tensions. Situation must be resolved through constructive dialogue. In that regard, it is disappointing that no significant progress was made at the recent Africa Union summit. Madam President, my third update focuses on the security situation. Countering Al-Shabaab remains one of the government's top priorities. Heavy rains and flooded, flooding hampered operations towards... A roadside bomb struck a passenger minibus and an auto rickshaw resulting in the death of at least five people in the capital Mogadishu. A roadside bomb struck a passenger minibus and auto rickshaw in Mogadishu, resulting in the tragic deaths of at least five civilians and leaving of a dozen others wounded on Monday night, according to the police. The Somali based militant group Al Shabaab has claimed responsibility for the attack, further underscoring the ongoing threat to the region. The explosion occurred at the source intersection in the Hilwa district during the bustling evening rush hour, inflicting kills and tragic upon innocent civilians. From bitterly responding to the scene, security forces have initiated rescue for efforts to assist injured and provide much needed support. Al Shawab, known for its spiritual tactics and insurgents, has not only targeted Somali government and security force, but has also conducted numerous attacks against the civilian population. al Shawab has also extended its reach beyond Somali's borders, conducting acts of terrorism in night pouring contests such as Kenya and Uganda. The Somali government has intensified its efforts to combat al Shawab over the past year, working in collaboration with the international departments a regional force. A former officer attached to the National Intelligence and Security Agency, NISA, has been sentenced to death by a military court here in Mogadishu. The military court of first instance delivered the verdict on Tuesday morning, finding Kahin guilty of murder 
of Abdullahi Yusuf Ahmed along Hosh Road in Mogadishu. Officer attached to the National Intelligence and Security Agency needs a Now that brings us to the end of this bulletin. My name is Abdirizak Ali. Thank you so much for tuning in to Dalsan TV. Till we meet again, have a lovely evening.